I bought this kit a while ago when I was looking at building an Arduino based 8x8x8 LED cube. This one was listed on Amazon as being Arduino compatible, meaning that I should be able to reprogram it after assembling it to display what I want. The kits arrived quite quickly, and this is what was delivered. There's a bag of LEDs, they said 550 LEDs are supplied in case some are faulty, the PCB to mount the components, and then a small case with the chips and other electronic components. There was one pretty obvious thing missing, the assembly manual. I had a look on the product page on Amazon, emailed the supplier, and even googled the supplier and other 8x8x8 LED cubes. The supplier never got back to me, and although I found a few similar cubes online, I never found a manual for this particular cube, so I packed the kit away and forgot about it for a few months. A week ago, I found the kit again and decided to try assembling it. At worst I'd have a cube which didn't work and would just be a shelf decoration. So let's get started with putting the cube together without the manual. I started out by testing all of the LEDs. I've never found a new LED to be dead, but since they said that they included 550 LEDs in case some were faulty, I decided to test them all first to avoid having to replace the LEDs once it was all assembled. I set up a simple 5V power supply and a 220 ohm resistor on a breadboard and got testing. Next I laser cut a template to lay out the LEDs. Rather than trying to get the placing right for each individual LED, having an MDF board which I could press the LEDs into and then connect up while they're held in place would dramatically speed up the process and hopefully result in a nice straight and evenly spaced grid of LEDs. I cut two layers, one with 3mm holes to hold the LEDs and one with 5mm holes to be the bottom spacer layer so that the LEDs don't touch the table underneath them. I then laid out the 64 LEDs on the template, making sure that the LEDs were all facing the same direction. So with the longer positive leg or anode on the right side and the negative leg or cathode on the left side. Next the idea is to connect all of the positive legs together in each column and all of the negative legs together in each row, making sure that they don't touch each other. I started with the negatives, bending them all down and connecting them together. Once all of the negatives were done, I did the positives. I used pliers to space the bend a little away from the back of the LED, so that the positive connections were spaced about a millimeter away from the negative connections. I continued this until all of the columns and rows were connected. I then decided to test the LEDs again, this time testing the connections. I used a small battery pack for this and just ran the leads over the columns and rows, checking that each LED lit up. I was glad I did this as I found two bad connections on my first layer. I then carefully removed the layer of LEDs from the template, trying not to bend the legs of the LEDs. I was worried that I might have damaged some of the joints when removing the LEDs, so I tested this layer again once I removed it from the template. I tested the subsequent layers only after removing them from the template as well. The next few went a lot better, but I did still find one or two bad connections and one LED was installed the wrong way around. Creating these layers is the most time consuming part of the build, but time spent here will result in a much neater looking cube down the line. It's also definitely worth taking the extra minute or two between layers to test all of the connections. Even fixing a single bad joint once the cube is assembled will be near impossible without damaging it when taking it apart again. Once all of the layers of the LEDs were made, I got started with soldering the components into place. This is where most of the guesswork came in. It was pretty obvious when making the layers that the LEDs have to be connected in a particular way, but it's less obvious which capacitors and resistors go in which places on the PCB when it isn't labelled and you don't have any instructions. The two electrolytic capacitors were the same value, despite the markings on the PCB being different sizes, so I just installed those in the two available spots. The ceramic capacitors were all the same size, although there were three supplied and only two spots on the PCB. I also noticed that there are two different value resistors supplied, two of one resistance and eight of another. I noticed that the PCB had two resistors on one side and eight on the other, so I just decided to install them as two of the same on one side and eight on the other side. 
The final part of the PCB assembly is to mount these holders onto the board to plug the legs of the LEDs into. I cut the strips up into individual pins and then broke the plastic off them. I then installed one on each of the holes on the PCB. Luckily these could be installed from the component side of the PCB, as the back side of some of these pins were covered by the IC sockets, something which I hadn't really thought about earlier. I also noticed that on the PCB there are locations for some pin headers and two push buttons, but the components weren't supplied. I assume that the header pins are from programming the chip, and the push buttons could be used to change the display currently being run on the cube. I decided to install these components as I had some push buttons and pins lying around, and I wanted to be able to reprogram the chip later as well. Now that all the components are in place, I could plug the LED layers in. From the other cubes I've seen online, I assumed that the positive legs of the LEDs went into the holes directly underneath the cube or the columns, and that the negative legs would get joined in layers and connected to the holders alongside the cube. It turned out that the negative legs on my LED layers should have been on the other side, as this was the back side of the cube, but this doesn't really make much difference. Once the layers were installed, I bent the negative legs at 90 degrees to join each layer together. The next mystery was to decide which layer to connect to which numbered holder. Was 8 the bottom layer or the top layer? I decided to temporarily connect these layers as there was a good chance my guess would be wrong. Another issue was that the red insulated wire supplied to connect the layers to the holders was too short, by about 2 or 3 centimeters. I didn't waste any of it with incorrect lengths or stripping too much wire, so I'm not sure why it was too short. I made a plan for the shortest connection and was then ready to power up the cube. I plugged the power supply into a USB charger and pushed the switch to turn it on. The built-in program is a bit odd in the beginning, as it's not really clear if any of the layers are working or not working correctly. I would have thought that a good initial test would be to light up all the LEDs, or at least the layers sequentially. I left it running for a while and eventually some recognisable patterns started emerging, and it looked like I'd guessed the layers correctly. There was a typical rain type animation, where the LEDs dropped from the lit up top layer, and the top layer was actually the top layer of the cube, so I assume that I got the layer numbers correct. If they were the wrong way around, then the rain would fall upwards. As expected, the buttons don't seem to do anything, but I'll be looking to program them to change what is being displayed on the cube once I figure out how to program it. It also seems like the resistors are correctly installed. There aren't any obvious bright or dim rows or columns. Next I'm going to try and figure out how to program it, and I'll be making a clear acrylic case for it as well. Thanks for watching, please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.